Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about various meteor showers, specifically about the most famous meteor shower known as the Perseid meteor shower, formed by this beautiful comet that you see on the screen known as Swift Turtle. Now we're going to be discussing and simulating these showers and I'm going to try to explain to you how all of these showers are usually formed and what they actually uh, are like if you were to combine all of them sort of at the same time using a simulation from in, in Webster. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. So actually we're not going to be using the Universe Sandbox that much today, we're going to be using a free simulation that uh, you can find in the link in the description below. And this is a simulation by um, a person by the name of Ian Webster who came up with quite a lot of really really cool simulations. And here's what this simulation looks like, it's actually pretty cool because it totally runs from your browser. It's a three-dimensional representation of what Swift Total Comet has created here in space and each of these particles is basically a little piece of ice that was left by the comet as it passed around the sun for thousands, millions and possibly billions of years. Now as you can see the only shower we see here right now is the Perseid shower which usually happens in mid-August and sometimes even starts in mid-July and it kind of, actually let's accelerate this just so it looks a little bit faster, it kind of looks like this and you can even see this from a different perspective. So here's for example what uh, it might look like if you were to follow Earth as it passes through this uh, stream of icy particles. So we can actually choose follow Earth and you'll see that once in a while, specifically once a year, uh, our planet Earth passes through this stream that's essentially right here. This happens in mid-August. You can also see it uh, completely from Earth. And here's what this looks like if you are on the surface of Earth. So basically we pass through this uh, leftover of the comet right around here. Now interestingly, you can actually enable other showers as well. As a matter of fact, you can investigate all of the major showers from uh, Perseids in mid-August up to uh, Alpha Capricornids in late July. And as a matter of fact, if your computer is powerful enough, you can even watch all of them at once. So here we go. This is what all of this looks like if you were to combine all of the uh, meteor showers, major ones at least, all at once. And I remember all of these were formed by these comets that basically have relatively uh, small uh, periapsis, basically they approach sun relatively close and relatively large apoapsis where they actually leave uh, out to uh, the outer solar system and as a matter of fact this one here goes very very far and comes back um, every few hundred years to approach uh, this area and to basically pass through a very similar region to where our earth would orbit. So as you can see these particles indicate that a lot of these comets have actually passed relatively close to where Earth might have been. And the name Perseid and actually all of the names of the other meteor showers are essentially formed from the idea of where you usually observe um, these meteor showers in terms of the location in the sky. So like for example, let's slow this down for a second, if we were to actually look at Perseids only, uh, we can actually even see it here by clicking this button. Uh, you would see that uh, you would normally see uh, the particles approach from this region, which is basically in the uh, Perseid uh, radiant, which is in the uh, part of the night sky inside the constellation of Perseus. And all of the other ones have very similar formations. So this is Orion, this is Taurus, this is Leo, Gemini, and so on and so forth. And because this has been around for quite some time, uh, many different cultures have actually uh, developed their own interpretation of these meteor showers and I believe the Catholics actually refer to uh, this particular event as the Tears of St. Lawrence because apparently uh, it looks like the tears obviously because of the meteors falling through the sky but it's also because around August 10 it uh, usually is at its highest and this is normally referred to as the date of uh, the martyrdom or basically the death uh, of St. Lawrence when he became the martyr uh, back in 258 AD. 
But let's actually get back to more scientific facts, specifically that back in 1862 it was the Italian astronomer Giovanni uh, Schiaparelli who actually realized that all of these meteors, specifically the ones in August, were the result of the swift tuttle comet that I showed you a few minutes ago right here in Universe Sandbox. And this comet, if you actually look at its orbit, um, actually passes through the um, orbit of Earth. And as a matter of fact, Swift Tuttle happens to be known as the so-called single most dangerous object known to humanity for a simple reason. One, of course, being that it's actually relatively lar large, it's 13 kilometers in size. And two is that um, for many years we were under impression that when it comes back to visit Earth um, in 2126, on August 14th, it may actually even collide with Earth, but um, further calculations show that the chance for collision is actually really, really low now, so these fears have now been sort of discredited. But nevertheless, uh, in the next few thousand years, uh, this is actually still the object that has the highest chance of potential collision with with our planet Earth, and because of its size, the explosion created would be like 27 times more powerful than one of the most powerful impacts that our Earth has sustained back in uh, Cretaceous Pelagian uh, period, which basically caused an extinction. So here, if Swift Tuttle did collide with our planet Earth, which we can simulate using the Universe Sandbox, the actual ca uh, catastrophic effects would be quite, quite dramatic. And we can obviously demonstrate this by launching Swift Auto, let's just say right here into Africa and observing the effects of the collision as it approaches our planet Earth. Now, unfortunately in the Universe Sandbox, the actual calculations might be a little bit off uh, when it comes to impacts, but nevertheless, it might create some really cool explosions uh, because it's moving at a relatively fast speed at, of about 80 kilometers per second and it's about to collide with Sahara Desert. And here we go. So as you can see, the actual explosion is pretty dramatic. Now this would obviously cause some major um, catastrophic events on our planet, including tsunamis, dramatic earthquakes, potentially lots and lots of volcanic eruptions. Uh, but uh, chances of this happening in the next four to five thousand years is actually not very high at all. As a matter of fact, it's very, very low because we recalculated the chances of collision and we now are pretty confident that until about 4,479 there is nothing to worry about and even in 4,479 the passage will be still probably at around 1 million kilometers away which is about um, four times as far away as the moon and I don't even see the moon there it is so it's about four times as far, far away as, as the moon is right now. So in other words, there's really nothing to fear here. Chances of um, any of these comets colliding with our planet while we're still around is very, very low. But nevertheless, the effects that they create in our night skies, and specifically if you look at all of them at once, are really, really dramatic. So every once in a while when our planet passes through these streams of ice particles, and we are actually going, are going to simulate this once again by watching everything from Earth. And every time this happens, you can kind of see that this is why we see these meteor showers, because basically these particles collide with our planet Earth at a very, very high velocity of up to 80 kilometers per second. And in like milliseconds, they burn up and create very, very beautiful um, streaks that you see in the skies. And so essentially, this is how all of these major meteor showers um, are created. This is what they are. And this is why we see those meteor showers in the skies because of these particles that you see formed by comets. Now, if you want to explore the simulation, the link for this is in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space stuff and wants to learn through video games and come back tomorrow to because you're going to learn something else you may have not known before. Anyway. Once again, this is a simulation by Ian Webster, and I believe the data for these meteor showers came from uh, Peter Jeniskins, and I just wanted to thank these guys for making these amazing simulations. And of course, the Universe Sandbox came from people who made Universe Sandbox. I don't really know who they are. Anyway, if you want to check out Universe Sandbox, it's also in the description below. You can purchase it from the link. See you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. Now let's actually try to disable all of these and accelerate time and see what it all looks like from a distance. Look at this amazing 
creation that these comets have made. So it's pretty incredible. <laughs>